Welcome to Homestead Reptile. Today is Homestead Tuesday, and today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the American Brass. I am going to be brutally honest. Uh, this is my opinion of raising them for a year. The aspects I love about them and the aspects I absolutely dislike about them, and I'm noticing is going to be a major problem for the future of this breed. So, the American Breast has a very small gene pool. Um, you, they... They come from France, and every once in a while, new blood gets imported. It's very different from a heritage breed that is native to the United States, like the Plymouth Rock. They're, they don't have a genetic bottlenecking. There's tons of them. They're genetically diverse. Um, so we ordered 13 chicks from Breast Farms. That was our first mistake, going to Breast Farms. So one chick died on arrival, and the other ones were all fine, relatively fine, and we got them into laying hen adulthood. So first off, we noticed we had a cross beak, we had some wing deformities, and we had toe deformities. All that is bad. So this is not just this farm had bad um, chickens. This is a known problem with the American breast. Not the cross beak thing, but the uh, toe deformity, split wing, um, being small of size, that is a breed characteristic that they're trained and breed out of um that it's a problem so one of the roosters that we got ended up being half breast so half breast half copper moran and we did not order a a half breast half copper moran we ordered american breast so they did not give us our money back or anything as like kind of poo poo on you that's what you get um so out of all those chickens we have two remaining pure breast and one rooster who is half breast. So that absolutely sucked. It's, it was horrible. Um, and it's not like we're novice chicken keepers. All of our other chickens are fine. It was just the breast that had any problems. And surprisingly, our half breast is the healthiest out of that group. So this leads me to this point. American breasts have a very small gene pool. Um, they were first imported, I believe, in 2011 or 2015. The last import of new blood came from 2017, and it sucks. Because the breasts have a relatively small gene pool, you, they're, they're, I have run into health issues. So with all of them dying, pretty much all of them dying, it's a health issue crisis. It's not just me that are finding this problem there's a lot of other people um that are also finding problems with the american breath with their their health um i'll put up posts that i have found um there's i'll leave links to breeders who are getting out of them and now got back into them because there was a refresh in their gene pool in 2017 but if you constantly have to refresh their gene pool from another country I don't necessarily think it's the best breed for a homestead because then you constantly have to go out and get new blood that it's expensive so we're going to try the breast again and i'm going to show you some example of our remaining breasts what i like and what i don't like about them they do put on weight decently well um they are not cold hardy so some places say they are cold hardy they are absolutely are not cold hardy um, I don't want to baby a bird. I want them to do well in the environment that I put them in. And the American breast might not be the chicken for you. There's a lot of other heritage breeds that are good that just need to be worked on. Um, a lot of heritage breeds have functionally gone extinct because they're no longer used for meat purposes anymore. So we have the Delaware. That used to be the top meat bird in the past. You have the, um white plymouth rock there's a lot of fantastic meat birds out there that have rich history of being meat birds they're just no longer meat birds anymore i think there could be a lot more that go into them if they're worked on this here is our american breast one of our surviving american breast candies right here bright blue legs And you see how this toe right here points this way. So, all right. So, an example of a bad toe here. It goes this way. It should be straight like this. You see how this one's straight. This one curves this way. 
this is not good. And you see, this one does it the exact opposite way, too. This is common for this breed to have this. So... She's not a bad hen at all. She's actually pretty good hen. She's one of the largest ones we have. So this is one of the very few girls that we have surviving. Most of them were very small. She's actually a very nice sized girl. She has a wonky comb. But she is in fact a very good sized hen. blue legs. We can see their toes again. She's not a bad bird. Alright, now we're going to grab the man. And this boy right here is our 50%. He has a lovely comb. He did lose. Ah. You're going to bite me like that? Hmm? He's a good boy. Like I said, he's a 50 percenter. Let me get those legs back here, buddy. And he has bleed through. You can see it in the tail. Glossy black feather right here. You can see that. You can see it in the plumage. Speckling. Now, he is not a bad bird. He has a lot of muscling. He's not bad at all. Now, he has feathered feet. He has good feet. And you can see that blue leg. He has pink between here, which is not a disqualifier for the American breast. This just means you'd want to breed differently. Let me show you his next leg. see here again bright blue legs let me go because he's irritated with me I'm sorry buddy I'm gonna open the door back <coughs> all right this is our second American breast girl see those bright blue legs you can see that tilt this way with the toe again Super common to have this in this breed. She just has one toe that's like this. The other one. Now, this is an extremely angry, broody girl right here. But she has a smaller cone. She actually did much better in the winter than all the other females. And actually has a little blue in the earlobe as well. Now, I would say in my experience with our flock of American breasts, they are not very friendly. They, like this, she's very upset, does not like to be handled. Good. See her here. She's got a horrible chicken. But I do have better weighted birds. She's not four See those blue legs. She's not a bad individual. I'm gonna let you go. Yeah. All right. Now she's 
very angry, very traumatized. So we have not completely given up on the breast. Like I said, there's attributes I really like. I love the dominant white trait. It's basically a cheat code to make a pretty much white chicken. And then when you have two of the traits together, you make a solid white chicken. I love the blue legs. I think they are a really attractive chicken. Um, I think they are an actually a pretty good meat bird if you can fix the problems they have and you can keep them alive. They have a really bad genetic problem because they're super 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 inbred think about it if you only you were you have a small population you have a small number of hatcheries that are consistently selling them and they're all related to each other at this point the last shipment was in 2017 so uh, if you the, the likelihood that they're not related to each other is really low at this point so as you're line breeding and spiral breeding and your different breeding methods you're just breeding closer to closer to closer and it's okay for a while but you eventually something snaps and it has to give and that's what i've noticed with our shipment of american breasts so like i said we haven't given up we're going to be collecting uh 12 hatching eggs we're going to be hatching out a different line not from this line that we have here they're still probably somewhat related to each other though so what are plans for our homestead? We want a reliable meat source. And we're going to be playing around with the American breast. We're going to keep a pure line. We're going to also do some hybridization. So we have that 50% rooster that we bred to our remaining hens. And we have 75%. And we also have some 25% American breasts. And so far, I'm actually pretty impressed with their growth rate so this one right here is a 75 american breast um so it's 75 percent american breast 20 25 25 percent copper moran so it has two copies of that dominant white gene and this chick is still quite young and it is solid white no bleed through no black specks no nothing it is a solid white ch chick um its legs are actually a lot bluer in person they look green um in this photo box but they were actually kind of a blue gene color I'm very impressed. Now, it does have some of that feather footing coming through, but something you didn't know, um, and I didn't know until I did more research into the American breast, so their standard is to be clean-legged, but American breasts, really poorly bred ones, can have feathered feet, so that's something to also keep in mind. Um, but wait, that guy is also part copper moran, so I'm betting it is pulling from the copper moran. So this is also another 75% uh, American breast. Um, this one is the smaller one. This one hatched out a, a day later, I believe. You can see this one is starting to get that lovely blue sheen on the legs. So there you don't hatch out American breast. Pure American breast don't hatch out with the blue legs. But they develop them as they age. You can see some feathering on the feet. So, so far with these 75%, and I only have a very few number of these guys going. I have another batch of eggs that will hatch out um, in a few days. I am pretty happy. Um, this is a little dark breast. So if you remember back with that last female that I brought, you saw some of that black splashing. So she is a dirty, dirty trick chicken. So what I mean about that, a trick chicken, is she, we bought her as a American breast splash. She is the cheap way of making a splash. When you take a black American breast, you breed it to a white American breast, and you get something that kind of looks splashy. But it's not. It's that one copy of that dominant white gene um half coating the bird and you get some black flecking going through so that was very 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 disappointing but we do have this guy who is a 75 percent black american breast so i guess that's pretty cool this one looks like it's going to be a little rooster that's why there's a tag on his leg so so far so good i will be continuously reporting and watching these guys grow we'll be uh, monitoring their weight their food intake um, this one is my favorite so far. The legs are really thick. It's just a very plump little chick. It's a very good size. And we can, here you can see absolutely no black flecking. Solid white bird. Really good growth rate. And I'm really happy so far. So if you take this 75% and you breed it back to a pure breast again, you get 80%. Then you'll get 90%. Then you'll get like 100% back to a level of an American breast again. Um, so the reason why I am experimenting with this is the genetic bottlenecking they have. It doesn't matter how delicious the bird is. If it has genetic conditions where they just th don't thrive, because think about it, inbreeding 
will cause problems not just in the features of the animal, just like their health. Their immune system sucks. So these little chicks are dark cornishes. Not to mistake them with the Cornish crosses, these are dark cornishes. So these chicks are a meat breed as well. So these are a heritage meat breed. A lot of them, they're a very threatened breed. So these guys have a high density and muscle tone. So we're going to be experimenting with these two females in the future to see what we can do with the American breasts again. More new genetics, maybe more muscle tone, uh, maybe making a bigger bird, but we're playing around with it. Um, we're also again keeping pure line. So this is our 25% American breast, and you can see with this guy, solid white, no black flecking. That little bit of black speckling you see on the neck, that is actually dirt. Um, the chicken is solid white. So it has actually really decent blue legs. I don't think they're going to get bluer than they are, but we'll have to see. But it's a hefty bird. This is a really big chicken. For its age, it is, it is massive compared to all the other chicks in its group. And it's younger than a lot of them. It's just a big, meaty bird. And so far, and again, this is still a very young pullet. Um, I'm very happy with it. It's bigger than the pullets of our American breasts when we got them when they were this age. I'm really happy with it. It eats well. It's healthy. It's alert. It's foraging. It's doing all the things I want a chicken to do. So again, this is 25% American breast, 25% copper moran, and 50% Plymouth rock. And I, it's looking really good. So you can see this toes are good feet are good it's just a good looking bird and i so far i'm really like it you can see the toes aren't like bent backwards they're not twisted they don't have bent toes the wings look good and again that um off color pigmentation right there it's solid white it's just dirty um dust bathing um got pooped on probably by someone but again so far i'm really happy um we're going to be taking a couple of these chicks, growing them up for food, and seeing what we like. And again, we're going to keep pure lines to have a a group to to um, look at. But this girl right here, the yellowfoot one, so this is just a plain white Plymouth Rock. So again, this breed was the foundation breed to the Cornish, the Cornish cross. Um, and... In the past, white Plymouth rocks were the top meat bird. So, as I was saying, a lot of meat birds are functionally extinct. They're there. You can get them, but they're small. Um, they no longer, people don't really use them for meat anymore. So, something else we want to do here on the homestead is take a few of these heritage breeds and actually make them functional again. Make them into good meat birds. Because even if you do like the American breast, um, they have certain attributes I don't like. The Their gene pool is super small. And I think it'd be easier to work with a bird that has a wider gene pool, like this guy right here. Um, even if it might not be the world's tastiest chicken, as long as it lives and is thriving in your environment, that's that's what you need. Um, the white Plymouth Rocks are cold hardy. They have better genetics. They're just, in some aspects, they're better. They might not taste as good, supposedly, because I've never tasted an American breast because they kept dying. Um, so, again, you need to have a bird that also functions. It can be the best tasting bird in the world, but if it's not functional for your property, it doesn't make sense. If it's not functional for the environment, if you're going to have to keep it in a pristine habitat where there's air conditioning, it's uh, biosecure, all this stuff for a chicken, it's not a functional chicken. Um, you want something that's better than a Cornish cross. That's why we've got the American breast and we're hoping to use them. So again, I don't think they're necessarily bad, but I think there are some limitations with the American breasts. Um, you have to be really careful about how closely related they are than you would with any other breed. Uh, they're just poor genetics.